<laughs> that would be great. Do you have to say anything? No. Let me just say take one. Take one. Yeah. Nancy, you grew up in Wigan. Do yeah. Do you have any fond childhood memories from there? Yeah, I mean, my whole childhood was quite a nice experience, generally. I lived across from the road from Billings Hospital. It was like a big 80s building. I was born there and we lived opposite when I was growing up. One of my favourite memories of my childhood is there was like um, an aerial on top of this hospital that looked like a crocodile that I used to look at every day. Like when you, when you were younger, was there anything in particular you wanted to do? And as you got older, did those ambitions change? When I was really young, I wanted to be a detective. Um, right, clearly that's not happened. That's not happened now. No, I didn't have the skill set for that job. Um, and then when I got a bit older, I wanted to run a sweet shop because I loved it the way that um, the woman in the sweet shop opposite me used to give me the bag of sweets and then twizzle it like that and make a little knot in it. So I wanted to do that when I was a grown up. Then I grew up a bit more and then I wanted to be a poet. And I started writing poems all the time. Then when I was a teenager, I just wanted to be a musician. And I just started playing musical instruments. I didn't want to be a musician, that's wrong. I just wanted to play music. Like when did you start playing the piano? And... When I was a child, um, I'm not sure actually. Um, I used to play all kinds of like plastic toy instruments, you know. I used to play all of that and pots and pans. Um, because I wanted to be like, well, I didn't really want to be a drummer, but I just wanted to make drum noises on the pans. And then for years I was like, can I have a piano? Can I have a piano? For, for absolutely years. And my mum was like, because there's no musicians in my family, my mum was like, oh, you're too young to play piano. Your hands are too small. There's no point. Because she thought it was just a whim. And then I went on at her for about six or seven years. Um, and then her friend was getting rid of a piano. In fact, this piano... Um, a friend was getting rid of it, so she had no excuse then. So we got it, and I was about nine then, uh, nine or ten. All right. Do you get lessons or anything after that? With it? Yeah, I got lessons with a man called Mr. Quater, who was very nice, and um, he taught me like how to read music and stuff. Um, but then, when I was about thirteen or fourteen, he thought that I was going to be like maybe become like a really good concert pianist and um he started trying to get me to like do all everything dead properly you know and try and get me to do concerts and sit up with the straight back and he balanced a glass of water on the hand whilst I played and stuff and that mixed in with the fact I was a teenager didn't really go so well so yeah. I stopped playing piano and um yeah f felt a bit upset about it all really because I felt like I wasn't, um, you know, good enough because I didn't want to practice and that. But there was an old guitar at, at our house, so I started playing that instead because nobody had told me what to do on that. So I enjoyed it more. Ah, uh, fair enough. And I just sort of came back to it later or worked in what you learned there. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot all about the piano because it was, like, been tainted. And then um, I started playing guitar, but I played it wrong. I played it like across my lap because I was like, well, I, you know, just messing about. Mm. I didn't have any ambition, really. And then I started playing it properly. Um, and then after that, then I, I started playing the harp when I was about 19 or 20. Um, and like, I didn't really play piano very much. And it was only a few years later, like when I was 22 or something, I was, I was like, oh... I just played piano a bit and then I came back to it and then for years I've been trying to get my piano back from out of the garage at my mum's house and dad's house so uh, I've only just got it back last year. I moved to Manchester first in, uh, hang on let me just work this out now, um, I've got to do some maths, I think I was, I think I was about 22, yeah, right, right, 22, right. 23, 22. Yeah, 22, I'm saying 22. I, d I started writing songs when I was about 15. Right, right. That's when I was playing the guitar incorrectly. Um, that must look quite funny. Yeah, I started writing songs then. And then um, at the Christmas variety show at our school, I, I, I sung a song um, on the stage, but I thought I couldn't sing, so I used to like put this weird voice on. Um, can, can you do it? Can you do it for us now? It's kind of how I sing now, anyway. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so I started writing songs then, but I didn't have any confidence to play them to anyone. And then um, I've always just written songs. I mean, I used to write songs even before that, but I never used to finish them off. I just would have the ideas and then nothing would come of it. Yeah. But then when I was 15, I used to make them make sense and put them in an order and, and everything. Um, and then there was this group of people in Wigan called Wigan Music Collective. There's this guy called Dave Fairhurst, who I'm still good friends with. Um, and they used to put on gigs and in a local pub in the Tudor in the tavern in Wigan. So I went down there and made some musician friends. Uh-huh. And that's when I started failing academically. <laughs> Nancy, do you have a, a formula for how you write music? Um, no, I don't. Um, like, so I've been writing songs for you know 15 years now um, in an ordered format. And at first it was quite haphazard. Like I'd have an idea and then you know I'd have to kind of make it work. And So I've released four albums now, an EP and then three albums. And then I can track my songwriting through those different collections of music. So on the first one, it was kind of very simple. I'd just come up with a little idea on the harp or on like some instrument and it, they'd be very simple structurally. They wouldn't go anywhere. And some of the uh, stuff that I recorded on that first EP was 
made up on the spot as well just like <clears throat> not very well thought out um just you know um quite simple and um impulsive type stuff and then um my first album i put a bit more thought into it but i didn't really have much like i didn't have as much confidence as i have now to to switch it about through different keys and mess about with stuff right, so right. I used to keep things again quite st simple um, structurally, but the arrangements got a bit more um, complicated. I I had like ideas of what I wanted it to sound like, um, and then I'd kind of structure it that way. I'm not re really making much sense, am I? And then, okay. then the, on my next album, um, I got a bit more adventurous with things and. Um, my way of writing now, basically what I'm trying to say, my way of writing now is quite different to how it used to be because it it used to be quite... I used to be quite emotional about it and just, like, sort of go off in my head and just play something around and around and then come up with ideas. But now I'll really, really look at something and go, what do I want it to do? Mm -hmm. Do I want it to, like, go up or down or sound like this? And I have more of a... I'm more able to create the vision that, that I want now mm. um so i'll usually i've tried different techniques really sometimes i'll just come up with an idea when i'm like driving it's usually when i'm driving because that's when i have to risk my life to record it on my phone and maybe get arrested for using my phone while I'm driving you that's shouldn't do you that, that energy though, right? yeah? that's where you get that energy though it's, yeah. it's because i'm not supposed to be writing songs <laughs> when i'm driving because if i try and write a song i can't write a song so I have to try and distract myself all the time. Um, so I'll come up with a tiny little like idea, just a tiny idea, and then for the next six months I'll work on that idea and like make it, put it into a, a, a format that makes sense. And then I have to try and put lyrics into it which sound right sonically, but also say what I want them to say, which is the bit that takes quite a long time for me. So it's you. You literally just slot the lyrics into the like to the syllables you've got in your head, or just. Um, yeah, yeah. There's always like syllables in my head that I want it to sound right. <laughs> that rhythmic, yeah, to fit the rhythms. Yeah, it's got to fit the rhythm. Um, sometimes the lyrics might come first, but not very often. It's usually the rhythm comes first. Right. It's usually based on rhythm, and then everything else comes from there, generally. Do you feel that the way you write your music would be seen as normal? Because I don't think it is. <laughs> Expand. Well, I don't have any idea on the answer to that question because I'd have to, I'd have to interview other writers to... Yeah. I don't know. I know quite a lot of people are method, quite methodical about it. Um, I was in a songwriting class once. It was, it was awful. <laughs> like, songwriting class. It was really the worst experience. Um, the person who was giving the class was like... Um, can you tell me what makes a good lyric? I might have told you this before. Have I told you this before? He told me all, all sorts okay. of things. <laughs> <laughs> Barely listening. Um, right, he said, what makes a good lyric? And I put my hand up and I was dead shy at the time. I was dead, like, I used to be really, really shy. And um, I said, honesty. And he laughed me out of the room. He was just like, that's such a stupid answer. And he really, really picked it apart. He was like, what do you mean? And I was like, I don't really know what I mean. I was just like saying something. Um, yeah, it was really upsetting. So from, I guess from, he, he doesn't think I'm normal. Um, yeah. who, and, who, who is it? Um, I don't want to say his name because he's a person. Because I remember you have told me this story before. Yeah, uh, yeah, that upset me. Well, well known guy. Yeah. But it's crap though, he must obviously is crap. <laughs> talking about <laughs> yeah well I just maybe you didn't like me some people don't like me when they meet me <laughs> but I don't know I don't know how other people write everyone writes differently don't they and I write totally differently all the time I'm like not like one person sometimes I write like this person sometimes I write like another person I try and write in all different ways yeah so it's kind of like a big like um, well I suppose obviously you started off doing like folky music yeah like, rediscovered going back um, and yeah a lot of it's kind of feels quite stream of consciousness I, don't, I can basically I can see the development you're talking about basically right do you know what I mean but is that why you that, think like, it's folky not approach. yeah I think that's what's not normal is that it's like it's almost like the. it's not like you know bringing a chart to it you know you wouldn't you, 
I, I wouldn't expect you to turn up like, right, this is the chart, these are the, these are the chords, we're stringing them along. I am going to do that, though. Leave them, really? Yeah, I've got charts for you. Well, that segues <laughs> nicely into uh, another question. Is the way, obviously, you know, you've had this development in how you're writing music and creating music, so going forward, what are the... the what, what kind of approach are you taking now if, if you're working on anything um, that you are? Well, at the moment, what I'm trying to do is... Um, what I did with my last album, I got myself in a bit of a pickle with it because I went and made demos, but I, I really liked the demos, but they weren't sonically that good. So then I had to go through a lengthy process of unpicking what I'd done and trying to keep the spirit of it, but get rid of all the rubbish sound sounding things and, and it was really lengthy and it took ages and I could have done it much better. So this time what I'm trying to do is write songs and just concentrate on writing the song and put a little bit of the arrangement in there as well, like what I want to happen where and what I want it to sound like, but not get too um, tr fixed on the details of it. Right. Um, just write a simple song and then like do some um, pre-production before I record it and get it all nailed down. Um, aside from just the yeah, like specific Buddhism stuff, do you have like are there other beliefs, convictions, ideals that inspire your music, or at least your, you know? Um, it's it's hard to know, isn't it? Beliefs, I don't know. Um, because I think the thing about beliefs quite often is you don't realise you have them. Do you know what I mean? Because you just believe things. Yeah, yeah like the sky's blue. And... Yeah. So. I guess I only know that I believe things by talking to people and then going, oh, right, you don't think that. That's interesting. Um, but I like to learn about everything all the time, and I don't presume to know anything either, um, which I think is quite useful. Because um, there, are, there are people in the world who think they know stuff, um, and I've definitely learned that I'm not one of those people. I found it quite interesting being in Morocco and um, hanging out with people who practice Islam. Just I found that really interesting. Um, not that not that I believe it. Um, not that I'm Muslim <laughs> or anything. But um, I found it interesting because I've never met people like that before in my life, and I, I really enjoyed their take on life. It wasn't just that that they were Muslim. They lived a completely different life to me and lived in a completely different climate. And you know, I like that. And I like meeting people who are completely different to me. Um, and believe different things who kind of make me learn stuff. I think my general base belief is that of learning. I like learning stuff, but I never remember anything I've learned, so I can learn it all over again. <laughs> They're well into music in Morocco, as far as I could see. I think maybe it's to do with like the culture of being outside, because it's hot, so you kind of see music everywhere, whereas perhaps people are making music all over the place around here, but you don't see them because they're all inside. Maybe that's the difference. Um, but I did have a very peculiar experience of playing, just sat around a fire with a load of people and they would all just play drums all the time, um, whether they were musical or not. And there were people who I would say weren't, <laughs> but they were just all having a go and it was amazing. Um, and they just expected everyone to join in as well. And it's kind of more like a, co a communal event that everybody, a drum circle, it was a drum circle basically, yeah. but, but it wasn't like, one that people had made because they thought it was cool. It was just the way they live. They just drum and sing all the time. And I was trying to learn songs. I learned one song. Um, uh, Mum taught me one song, um, which I'm going to record at some point. But um, I was like trying to sit him down and go, what's it do now? What's the structure do? And he couldn't understand my, my question because for yeah. him, it's just a song that he's learned and he just sing it all his life since he was born. And I'm like, yeah, but what's the rhythm doing? Like trying to write it down to try get my head around it. And they're really weird rhythms as well that don't make any sense to me. Um, that's why I loved it so much. Looking to the future, are you working on anything now or thinking about working on anything? Or... Yeah, I'm in the midst of working on something at the moment. Whoa. But I don't like saying that because people think, oh, I might be ready in a year. I don't know when it'll be ready. It could take any amount of time. It could be ready tomorrow. It won't be ready tomorrow, actually. Yeah, really, really focusing on it at the moment, which is great because I've not done it for quite a long time because of things that have been happening in my life, getting in the way and stuff. So it's quite nice um, to be writing again. Um, got lots of ideas. I've had lots of ideas for the past two years, but I've not been able to manifest them. So I've been in the ideas having phase. And now I'm in the manifesting the ideas phase. And then I'll be in the recording phase, hopefully, soon.
ridiculous. 